know from your phase two trial, yeah. you know, you can, why don't you explain the trial that you did? So Edith um, led and uh, The two I of you are on either side, this is great. <laughs> You're flanked. Who did the trial? <laughs> I'm flanked by the whole, the, the first line of TDM1. So yeah. it was the 4450 study and it was a frontline setting, HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer, 137 patients. And it was docetaxel trastuzumab as the control arm versus TDM1. Um, TDM1 was associated with an improved progression-free survival by about five months and significantly less toxicity. The grade 3, 4 uh, AEs were about 89% in the control arm, primarily neutropenia, um, and only 46% in TDM1. So in the frontline phase 2 setting, very impressive and promising results, but, but not, ready, not ready now for the frontline setting clinically. Um, and I think we're all anticipating the Marianne study, which will look at it in the frontline setting as a phase three study, which should come out, I think, next year. I think the accrual was completed a few months ago. I, I actually, yeah, and Marianne actually accrued 1,095 patients in the first line setting, all with her. So let's talk disease. about, why don't we say, was someone wanted to explain the Marianne? Sure. Someone take the, yeah, Edith, go I'll, ahead, explain I'll, Marianne, sure, what, sure. if you'd like to, go ahead. I'll be, I'll be happy to do it. I'm uh, involved, very involved with this, with this study. So yeah, it was a global trial um, uh, that enrolled uh, 1,095 patients uh, who had been deemed to have uh, HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer without prior uh, uh, chemotherapy or anti-HER2 treatments. The patients were randomized to one of three arms. Number one, taxane in combination with trastuzumab as control. So physicians could select either weekly paclitaxel or docetaxel once every three weeks as the taxane. A second arm was TDM1 alone uh, the third arm, TDM1, in combination with pertuzumab. Uh, accrual to this study was much faster than we anticipated. It actually completed a year before our initial estimation. And the last patient was enrolled in May of uh, 2012. So about a year ago. About a year ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we expect that data will be available uh, later 2013 or so, or 14 at the latest. ASCO 2000. So it won't be, it probably won't be San Antonio 2013? Uh, that is right. It will okay. not be San Antonio. Aren't, okay. Isn't the number of events still low, which is a really good thing, right? People yeah. are doing really well. Well, I, I cannot comment on, on this at this <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Good try. Nice try. <laughs> no, but we know if trials haven't presented that the event rates yes. either have to yes. be relatively low yeah. because yes. otherwise if the event rates are high, you see differences or well, futility one would faster. Assume the median PFS, yeah. One would assume the median PFS, though, from trastuzumab and ataxane is a year, right? right? So you've already, that's already pretty long. So, but I, it may even be longer, we don't know. Yeah, and this study is powered in a very interesting way because it's not only looking at each one of the investigational arms against control, but it's also powered to look at the two investigational arms, you know, the TDM1 alone versus TDM1 with pertuzumab. So I think the results of this, this trial are number one, eagerly awaited and potentially practice changing depending on the, on the results. So does anybody have a concern? I mean, this is a very expensive Marianne. So, so one, one, of the, one of the end results of this trial is going to be that we're going to learn whether TDM1 with pertuzumab or TDM1 alone yes. is better than docetaxel and trastuzumab when perhaps the question, and we'll talk about Cleopatra in a moment, is oh, yeah. are either of those approaches better than taxane, trastuzumab, pertuzumab? So yeah. you know, we're, it's going to be an interesting um, way to choose. Um, well, yeah. let's bring it into the...